True horror fans are always down to watch a slasher or at least a horror movie where characters slowly get picked off one by one on the way to the final girl, or final boy in some cases. We all know of the big hits that everyone has watched such as Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream and many others. This list here is going to be 11 lesser known horror movies that I recommend for people to watch that enjoy Friday the 13th. Some of them are mainstream movies, but could go unnoticed to casual horror fans so thought to include them here. There will be no spoilers throughout this video so you do not have to worry about the endings and potential final girls being ruined. With that being said, here we go. Number 11. Paiuakit. 2018. Leah Reyes is your normal, average teenager aside from the fact that she is extremely fascinated with black magic and occult practice. So in other words, an emo chick. Sadly, Leah's father passes away and it puts a ton of financial stress on her mother so they are forced to move to a remote woodland house out in the boonies and a new school district which deeply upsets Leah even more. One night when Leah is extremely angry with her mother, Leah wishes death upon her from an occult ritual book she has and she actually summons the demon Paiuaka to their home and she will soon regret ever doing this. Her mother doesn't die right away. But soon strange things continue to happen around the house and Leah even brings a friend over to hang out who wants nothing to do with the house after she stays a night there. Leah will soon be seeing visions of Paiuakit, and her mother is changing right before her eyes. Will Leah's mother perish in this one as Leah wished for or will Leah find a way to extinguish the demon for good? Number 10. My Bloody Valentine. 2009. In the mining town of Harmony, a drilling accident is caused by the son of the mine owner, Tom Hanniger. The mine collapses burying six miners alive. The rescue team finds only Harry Warden alive, but in coma, and the other miners murdered by his pickaxe, and they conclude that Harry killed them to save oxygen for himself. On Valentine's Day, Harry awakes from his coma in the local hospital, and he kills 22 people, including a group of teenagers that were partying in the mine. Harry is then killed by the deputy that responded to the incident, but the only survivors are Tom Hanniger, his girlfriend Sarah, their friend Axel Palmer, and his girlfriend Irene. Ten years later, adult Tom returns to Harmony after he found out about the death of his father. Tom has decided to sell the Hanniger mine, and finds that his ex-girlfriend Sarah has married Axel, who is now the local sheriff, and they have a son named Noah. On Valentine's Day, a rumor has speculated that Harry Warden also returned, seeking revenge against those that had escaped his pickaxe in the past and Tom is accused by Axel and other locals, who in turn makes accusations against Axel, who is behind the present-day murders. Number 9. The Wretched. 2020. Ben is a troubled, defiant teenage boy that is struggling to deal with his parents' recent divorce, and he and his brother have to go spend the summer with his father who he doesn't have a great relationship with anymore. When he gets there and gets settled in, he meets his dad's new hot, young girlfriend and quickly despises her because Ben looks at her taking his mom's place. With the family drama going on, a thousand-year-old which starts affecting everyone around them in the town. Ben is determined to defeat this witch who has seemingly made his brother disappear out of thin air and Ben is the only one that remembers him even having a brother. Even their dad has no idea who Ben is talking about when he mentions Liam so this witch has the ability to erase people from everyone's memory around them. Will Ben be the next victim of the witch and will their dad not have any children by the end of this one? Number 8. Black Christmas. 2006. The remake of the 1974 movie of the same name tells the story about Billy a young boy who was abused by his mother as a child. While his mother was cheating on Billy's father, she eventually killed his father and kept Billy in the attic for good, while she was with her lover and starting a new family right down below him in the house. As Billy's mother fell pregnant with a daughter and treated her with love, which Billy had never experienced with his mother, Billy came out of the attic after years and brutally murdered his mother and her lover. Cut to present day, a group of eight sorority sisters consisting of Kelly, Dana, Lauren, Megan, Claire, Heather, Megan and Melissa and their house mother, who now live in Billy's childhood home, find themselves being harassed by threatening and intimidating mystery phone calls during Christmas break and as one of the girls goes missing, the sorority girls begin being murdered one by one by no other than Billy. Whatever happened to Billy's half-sister that he kept alive after murdering the parents? Is she still alive? Does she know of Billy? Number 7. Totally Killer. 2023. In 1987, the town North Venon is attacked by a serial killer that stabs three 16-year-old teenagers 16 times every other day and was never caught. Now in 2023, North Venon celebrates the 35th anniversary of the notorious Sweet 16 killer, and the local Chris Dubasage gives a tour with tourists that want to see the places where the murders occurred. On Halloween, 
the 17-year-old Jamie Hughes and her friend Amelia Creston want to go to a rock concert, and Jamie's mother Pam Hughes asks her husband Blake Hughes to drive the girls to the show. While alone at home, Pam is attacked and murdered by the Sweet Sixteen killer that has made his return to the town. Jamie grieves the loss of her mother and Amelia is building a time machine that her mother Lauren Creston began working on when she was a teenager. Out of the blue, the Sweet Sixteen killer hunts Jamie down, and she hides inside the time machine. When he tries to stab her, he misses and hits the control panel. The conductivity of the steel of the blade makes the machine work properly, and Jamie travels to 1987. Now she wants to avoid the killing of the three teenagers and find who the killer is to save her mother in the future. Further, she needs Lauren to fix the time machine in 2023 if she ever wants to make her way back to present day. Will Jamie be able to identify the killer, and can Lauren fix the machine to bring her back home? Number 6. Deadly Detention 2017. Five high school students must spend their Saturday working on essays at school in detention because they all did something that put them there. A breakfast club-like group as they all differ from each other greatly and none of them are really friends with one another. But they are forced to work together when a deranged serial killer makes his way into the school and will not let them leave. After the killer eliminates the principal, all hell breaks loose and the classmates begin to get picked off one by one. Will anyone make it home to their parents that Saturday evening and who is even responsible for going on a killing spree at a Saturday school detention? Number 5. Head Count. 2019. It is spring break and Evan is going to visit his brother in Arizona as he does not get to visit him that often. Once there, they go on a hike up a mountain and run into another group of college kids that are visiting on spring break as well. One of the girls in the group catches Evan's eye and asks him if he wants to come hang out at their rental house that night, and after initially saying no, Evan's brother tells him he should go and have fun and they have a few days afterwards they can hang out with each other. Evan goes to the house to party with all of the kids and at night, they are sitting around a campfire telling ghost stories to one another and when it's Evan's turn, he reads one off some creepy pasta site and the next day, body doubles start appearing and others start going missing and no one has any explanation for how or what is happening. Evan must have conjured up a spirit with his cute online ghost story. But the real question is, how can he get rid of this spirit before he, himself, is vanished for good? Number 4. Haunting on Fraternity Row. 2018. It is the end of spring semester and a fraternity on campus at Arizona State is throwing their big end-of-the-year luau party, and everyone is going to be there. This movie follows the group of young men throughout the day before the party getting everything set up and ready to have the time of their lives. As they are cleaning the house and preparing everything, one of the guys finds a weird tunnel in the basement that leads to a room that is full of light bulbs everywhere and are really confused why the secret room is in the basement of their house. Not thinking much of it, they continue on with their party, but they will soon realize they unleashed a deadly presence that was locked away in that room. Now all partygoers are in serious jeopardy because this entity is going to have a feeding frenzy on every drunk college kid in that house. Will the fraternity guys be able to solve the mystery of their house and will the light bulb room actually ending up saving any of their lives? Number 3. Summer of 84. 2018. If you enjoy the movie Disturbia, you are going to like Summer of 84. Summer of 84 is pretty much a mix of the movie Disturbia with a hint of Stranger Things. This movie centers around a group of middle school boys that are just trying to do normal summer kid stuff, but Davey, the leader of the friend group starts to suspect that his next door neighbor is a serial kidnapper and a serial killer who is known as the Cape May Slayer. Davey tells everyone why he thinks this to be true but they all warn him not to ruffle any feathers because the man he is accusing is a local cop and a very respected man around the neighborhood, and well-liked. Davy understands this, but he also wants to unravel the truth and prevent any other kids around the town from being abducted because far too many kids are going missing and put on milk cartons. Is Davy correct with his intuitions or is he aiming for the wrong guy and could he be the next victim of the Cape May Slayer? Number 2. Sorority Row. 2009. The third college fraternity slash sorority entry on this list is Sorority Row. Sorority Row follows the girls of the Theta Pi who are throwing a party at the end of the year, and they help their friend Megan play a joke on her boyfriend because she found out he was cheating on her. They have Megan fake her death and make it look like it was his fault, and they take it a little too far and drive out in the middle of nowhere to pretend to dump her in a lake. When they aren't looking Garrett, the boyfriend, stabs a tire iron through Megan's chest to remove air bubbles so she wouldn't float and he unknowingly actually murders Megan. They all vow to never speak of this moment again and they do not get the police involved. A year later they are about to throw their big end of the year party again and once the night gets there, all of the girls start getting picked off one by one and they have no idea who the killer could be. They suspect Garrett, 
but whenever he turns up dead as well, they wonder if anyone else saw what happened that night. Could it be Megan's ghost or is one of them trying to make sure no one ever speaks of that night again? Number 1. Hell House LLC. 2016. The tragedy of one horrible October night back in 2009 during a Halloween haunted house tour is still surrounded in mystery. Sadly, what led to the death of 15 people, both crew and customers alike who paid to experience original scares in a controlled environment, remains small town Abaddon's greatest secret. However, as both the locals and the authorities claim that the harrowing incident was a result of an unprecedented and unfortunate malfunction. In the meantime, a documentary crew determined to dig for answers in the spooky hotel where it all started, gathers testimonies, photographs and amateur video material all fragments of an intricate, yet gruesome puzzle. Eventually, five years later, that night's sole survivor, Sarah, will provide the documentary filmmakers with personal raw footage, but is the crew prepared to witness the terror firsthand? They will soon see what actually took place that night in the haunted house attraction and who is responsible for the Adadan Hotel Massacre. That is it for this one. Any other lesser known horror movies that could make the list? Would love to watch them. Thanks for watching.